Hi, everyone. My name is Yuka Kano, and I teach and research at the Center for Applied Ethics and Philosophy. I work on the issues of gender, sexuality, race, and the ways in which their intersections are articulated through cultural means. We often think of being a woman or a man as natural identity that we're born with. This also comes with the idea that men are like that or women are like that. As a man, you should act this way. As a woman, you should not speak like that. Well, in the last couple of decades, feminism, gender and sexuality studies have convincingly argued that these categories, gender, sexuality, even race, are culturally and socially constructed and not given. Along these lines, my work revolve around how gender, sexuality, race and ethnicity operate in our daily lives to shape our own identity. There are a number of factors that contribute to shape our identity, but perhaps gender and sexuality play a crucial part in the formation of our sense of self. For instance, one of the mechanisms by which we conceive, fantasize, or act out our identity is identification. Cultural texts, such as film, art, literature, offer a good example to look at how these, um, how these identification and the desire mobilize who we are and how we view ourselves. The work I do has been inspired by queer studies. Although the term queer has been used for a long time, queer studies as an academic field emerged in 1999 in the United States. And it has been challenging what we call heteronormativity. Heteronormativity refers to a set of norms that regulate our way of thinking, behaving, and speaking based on same-sex gender identification and opposite sex desire. It touches upon our personal lives, but also serves as the foundation of so many institutions and social structures, from marriage and family to the nation state. So how do we approach queer studies in the Japanese context? What would be the culturally and historically specific modes of queerness in Japan? So let me give you two examples. First, girls' culture. Girls' culture appeared at the beginning of the 20th century and proliferated throughout the 1940s. That was the time when the Higher Girls' School Act was put into effect. And a new social category of jogakuse or schoolgirls came into being as a prototype of shoujo, or girls. Although it seems given now, jogakuse, or schoolgirls, was at the time a newly emerging classification, for previously, students were not differentiated by gender, so there were no female students or male students per se as social categories. So um, it was these adolescent girls who immediately became the agents of girls' culture. This is also the time when they started forging intensely intimate relationships. Such practices of romantic friendship 
which nonetheless often involve erotic implications, were known as S, which derived from the English town sister. We can trace the emergence of these new types of intimate relationships and affectionate ties among young uh, women and schoolgirls through different cultural products that were disseminated at the time. Girls' fiction being one foremost example. During this time, the author Yoshia Nobuko was a pioneer of girls' culture and girls' fiction, an icon of girls' culture. Her Flower Tales, a collection of 52 short stories, was considered to be the schoolgirls' Bible. And she repeatedly wrote about the strong bonds of two young women in the name of friendship. Yoshia wrote her stories for the magazines, and they were usually accompanied by illustrations called jojoga, which means lyrical paintings. Jojoga artists visually expressed the ethos of girls' culture in the somatic focus on young women in general, uh, schoolgirls in particular. These paintings portrayed girls surrounded by their favorite things like books, flowers, musical instruments. It is this particular genre that conveyed homoerotic images explicitly and implicitly. These paintings were enthusiastically consumed by the girls themselves. Even in the contemporary films such as Nana or Kamikaze Girls, we can see the trace of this Adi girls' culture, for in these films, strong female-female intimacy is portrayed, and this intimacy easily surpasses the heterosexual romance in its narrative and image, whether you call it love or friendship. So more currently, my interest has also turned to film festivals as a contemporary manifestation of queer in the cultural arena. Different from conventional film festivals that have been supported by national or public organizations to promote film industry and art, queer and LGBT film festivals provide unique sites where art and industry merge with local community and queer activism. Since Japan held its first lesbian and gay film festival in 1992, the number has grown to at least six LGBT film festivals now throughout the country. And even more interesting than the increase is the geographical shift. Japan began these film festivals in its major cities such as Tokyo and Osaka, like every other place in the world. Today, however, more and more queer film festivals are organized outside metropolitan areas. Examples include the Kagawa Rainbow Film Festival, the Aomori International Lesbian and Gay Film Festival, and in 2011, last year, Matsuyama City launched its Ehime LGBT Film Festival. In my new project on queer film festivals, I'm looking at the function of these film festivals in Japan as well as other parts of Asia, such as Thailand, Indonesia, Korea, and Taiwan. So these film festivals are not only cinematic or artistic experiences, but also as active modes of community building and networking. So these functions could be cultural and social, but also economic and political. Traditional film scholarship is not always adequate to analyze the development of these queer film festivals. Therefore, my project will be interdisciplinary in nature, looking for new methodologies and theorization. 
I'm very excited about finding difference and continuities of film festival dynamics in Asia in order to understand these culturally specific expressions and conditions of queerness. In a time when many are concerned that film industry itself is in decline, and the focus leans toward the intersection of industry and art, I believe that queer film festivals was the inclusion of activism and community building provide new insights into how the medium itself may evolve and even thrive. Please join us for in our interdisciplinary and challenging study. Thank you. <laughs>